Welcome to my new two-part episode about location lighting. In the first part, I'll be talking about a cheaper ITTL flash made by Sunpak, the PF30X. This particular model is designed for Nikon. You can also get it for Canon and Sony cameras. If you're looking for a cheap ITTL flash, then the PF30X is great for the price. It's completely automatic with a two-stop adjustment ratio on the back. It's light, it's compact, and is easy to use as sliding it onto the shoe mount and pressing the on switch. I found very little to complain about the operation and advertised function of these flashes. It makes for simple and bright images. It only uses two AA batteries, which lightens the load on the battery purchases where most flashes take four. Uh, this, however, can lead to long recycle times as the batteries lose charge. I would suggest using rechargeables. I purchased these to use as background lights in my location studio setup, and therein lies the problem. You cannot re remote fire these flashes, and I have two of them. Out of this huge array of sinks that I own, not a single one will fire this flash, not any of them. I have been able to use the sync cable with both flashes hooked on directly attached to the camera, but this leads to awkward fumbling and flat looking images. My end review of this product, it is great for easy single head flash pictures on your camera, but absolutely completely useless as a remote unit in a location studio setup. I would purchase this flash if you're just looking for a quick and dirty flash. If you want it for location lighting, it is completely useless. Do not purchase it. Go for something else. And thus is my review of the PF30X. And now on to a setup that works absolutely great. For the purposes of this video, I'm using a quote unquote throw in together studio. For this demo, I'm using a wireless trigger system I bought on eBay for 30 bucks commonly referred to in the photo circles as EBA transmitters. Fear not, they work really well. This is a simple two light setup. My main frontal light will have an umbrella on it to diffuse the light for a softer look. This is a fairly common way in photography of an easy to transport, easy to set up way to get soft light. I suggest everyone have this in your gear. For my background light, I'll have two flashes that I'm gonna try today. One is a Vivitar 283 manual flash. It's an old and extremely reliable unit. The other is a Nikon TTL SB90 with a manual setting. The whole reason the sun packs didn't work was the lack of a manual setting. I have constructed two modifiers that will hold colored gels for both of these flashes and produce my background light. These modifiers have an incredibly easy construction and are made out of white foam core. The gel is attached via Velcro stickers. I have an old example of this modifier on my blog from last year. If you're interested in seeing a version of it a little bit closer up, you can follow the link at the bottom that I'm posting right now. I attach the modifiers on the flash in a 90 degree position. This will cause a bounce effect and disperse the light in a wider range than a direct position would have. For starters, I'm going to use the Vivitar and show you examples of how the different colors work on the background. What's really interesting to note is that the cooler color side of the spectrum doesn't show up as well as the warm side. This is extremely useful information and says to me that I should avoid the cool colors as much as possible on location work. But for the example, I'm going to start with the cool color and then show you a warm color. This is the cool color. And this is the warm color. See, it shows up a lot better. For one last example, I'll show you what the SB90 can do with its modifier on that combines different gels together to make an interesting color combination. This has been a hugely beneficial test for me, and I hope it's also helped you in your photographic endeavors dealing with location lighting. And if you would like to see more of this method in a practical use, please follow the link at the end of my video, which will take you to my blog and show you a shoot that I did in the middle of the woods, which is pretty interesting using this technique. Thank you very much for watching my video, and I'll see you next time.